Watching the US dollar in 2018, Craig Hemke after a major downsize surprise. In 2017, one of the biggest stories for 2018 will be the relative value change in the US dollar. We say relative value change because, of course, the US dollar is typically measured by changes to the US dollar index. This index compares the value of the dollar to a basket of other major fiat currencies. So when we say, the dollar is falling what we're really saying is that it is depreciating versus the euro, yen, pound, and others. See below, 2017 began with the general consensus that the US dollar would strongly rise in the months ahead. Almost all Wall Street economists predicted this, and it led the venerable Economist magazine to print this cover in late 2016. Well, a funny thing happened on the way to a dollar resurgence. The index actually fell, and, in fact, it fell quite sharply. It seems that though the Economist believed a dollar rise was coming, Janet Yellen and President Trump said otherwise. And now here we are again at the start of a new year, and, once again, predictions of dollar strength abound. But is that about to play out? The chart below from the first trading day of 2018 appears to disagree. Note the breakdown bill 092, with what appears to be a test of the 2017 lows, near 91 coming very soon. For further clues, Check what the CRB Commodity Index is telling us. Any breakout about 195 would be significant. More specifically, what is copper saying about the future of the US dollar? All ADRC is now at multi-year highs, and at levels not seen since July of 2014. And where was the US dollar index trading back then? close to AT. So let's be sure to watch the US dollar very closely in the months ahead. If it falls another 10% or more in 2018, what will that mean for gold, silver, and commodity prices, in general? And with so many prices already on the verge of significant breakouts, the surprise of a falling dollar may be the fuel to prompt renewed bull markets across the board. The US dollar just had its worst year since 2003. Here is a look into the nitty gritty details of the 2017 plunge in the value of the US dollar by Wolf Richter of Wolf Street. Where will it go from here? Today is another down day for the US dollar, the third in a row, capping a nasty year for the dollar, the worst since 2003. In 2017, the dollar dropped 7% against a broad basket of other currencies, as measured by the trade-weighted dollar index, broad, which includes the Chinese yuan which is pegged to the US dollar. It was worse than the 5.7% drop in 2009, but not as bad the 8.5% plunge in 2003. Here are the past four years of the dollar, as depicted by the broad trade weighted dollar index, which tracks 26 foreign currencies. The index is updated weekly, with the last update on December 26 and has not yet captured the declines of past three days. This broad trade weighted dollar index is a weighted average of the dollar against the currencies of major US trading partners, the Eurozone, Canada, Japan, Mexico, China, UK, Taiwan, Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Brazil, Switzerland, Thailand, Philippines, Australia, Indonesia, India, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Sweden, Argentina, Venezuela, Chile, and Colombia. Among the largest currencies, the euro rose the most, soaring 14.5% against the dollar in 2017, and is currently trading at dollar 1.20. The Canadian dollar is up 7% 
against the dollar, the Japanese yen nearly 4%. As per the narrower dollar index DXY the dollar fell 10.2% for the year. The DXY measures the dollar only against the Euro, Japanese Yen, Canadian Dollar, British Pound, Swedish Krona, and Swiss Franc, but not against the currencies of other major US trading partners, such as China and Mexico. Thus the dollar has accomplished a feat in 2017, during a year, when the Fed continued with clockwork regularity its efforts, to raise interest rates gradually, and when it kicked off the QE unwind, thus taking dollar liquidity, out of the market, the dollar, instead of rising in response, had its worst year since 2003. Front running the Fed. In the second half of 2016, the Fed signaled fairly clearly that it would get serious about raising its target range for the federal funds rate. In the fall of 2016, Fed governors started suggesting that the QE unwind would need to start in 2017. So when the Fed raised rates in December 2016, for the first time, in a year, and for the second time, in 10 years, there was absolutely no surprise. Markets had expected it. And foreign currency traders had driven up the dollar in advance, from May 2016, through the end of 2016. The broad trade weighted dollar index jumped about 9%, and the DXY 10%. This move in the dollar was paralleled roughly by the move in 10-year Treasury securities, whose yield, after falling to a historic low of 1.37% in early July, soared in the second half, nearly doubling to 2.6% by the end of the year. Then, having successfully front-run the Fed's actions in 2017, it was time to take some money off the table. As 2017 dawned on the markets, the dollar and 10-year Treasury yields both fell, despite the Fed's consistent tightening. These moves have only encouraged the Fed. Had the dollar skyrocketed in 2017, and had long-term yields soared in response to the QE unwind, in a replay of the taper tantrum, some Fed governors might have felt a little queasy about their new monetary policies. But the opposite happened. Where does this leave the dollar for 2018? I think much of the damage to the dollar exchange rate against other currencies has been done. The new Fed will continue to tighten, possibly in a more hawkish manner, and in 2017. And the QE unwind is scheduled to pick up pace automatically, as announced in September. In Q1, the cap for the monthly balance sheet reductions doubles from $10 billion in October, November, and December to $20 billion a month. In Q2, it increases to $30 billion a month, in Q3 to $40 billion a month, and in Q4 to $50 billion a month. In total for 2018, the QE unwind is capped at $420 billion. This will rise to $600 billion in 2019. It represents a lot of dollar liquidity scheduled to disappear from the markets. Nothing like this QE unwind has ever happened before in U.S. history, so the results could vary, as they say. The dollar is likely to respond to this tightening U.S. monetary environment in 2018 with a bounce, especially given the sell-off in 2017 following the front-running in the second half of 2016. And if markets suddenly come to the realization that tightening is real and will continue, which they haven't yet, the bounce in the dollar along with long-term yields could happen abruptly.
economist believed a dollar rise was coming, Janet Yellen and President Trump said otherwise. And now here we are again at the start of a new year, and, once again, predictions of dollar strength abound. But is that about to play out? The chart below from the first trading day of 2018 appears to disagree. Note the breakdown below 92, with what appears to be a test of the 2017 lows, near 91 coming very soon. For further clues, check what the CRB Commodity Index is telling us. Any breakout about in general? And with so many prices already on the verge of significant breakouts, the surprise of a falling dollar may be the fuel to prompt renewed bull markets across the board. The US dollar just had its worst year since 2003 here as a look into the nitty gritty details of the 2017 plunge in the value of the US dollar by Wolf Richter of Wolf Street where will it go from here? Today is another down day for the US dollar, the third in a row, capping a nasty year for the dollar, the worst the dollar is falling what we're really saying is that it is depreciating versus the euro, yen, pound, and others. See below, 2017 began with the general consensus that the US dollar would strongly rise in the months ahead. Almost all Wall Street economists predicted this and it led the venerable Economist magazine to print this cover in late 2016. Well, a funny thing happened on the way to a dollar resurgence. The index actually fell, and, in fact, it fell quite sharply. It seems that though the Econ- Watching the US dollar in 2018 Craig Hemke after a major downsize surprise, in 2017, one of the biggest stories for 2018 will be the relative value change, in the US dollar. We say relative value change, because, of course, the US dollar is typically measured by changes to the US dollar index. This index compares the value of the dollar to a basket of other major fiat currencies. So when we say 195 would be significant, more specifically, what is copper saying about the future of the US dollar? All ADRC is now at multi-year highs, and at levels not seen since July of 2014. And where was the US dollar index trading back then? Close to AT. So let's be sure to watch the US dollar very closely in the months ahead. If it falls another 10% or more in 2018, what will that mean for gold, silver, and commodity prices?